Baltimore City Schools reaches an alarming low in student performance. As Project Baltimore's Chris Papps has learned, nearly half of high school students in Baltimore City this year earned a grade point average below a one. They take, they take, they take. When Giovanni Patterson ran for Baltimore City Council president last year. Yet, despite the amount of money they get, we don't see much change. He ran on a platform that included accountability and education. Our schools outspend 97% of other major school districts. Did you hear that? It's important to not let that go over your head. It's important to digest that little tidbit. Baltimore City Schools get more funding than 97% of the other school districts. And the reason it's important, well, it's several reasons it's important to understand that because they're always talking about these Sun school districts. Nobody cares about them. They don't get any funding. The, the, we don't get as much as the as, as the Glacier Glider school districts, and it's actually the opposite. Sun people school districts always get way more money, always have way more money than the Glacier Glider school districts. As a rule. So then they say, well, why is the money not translating into better performance? And that right there is something that is just a touchy subject. I talk about that a lot on Oc Nation News. I mean, Oc Nation TV. You can come uh, over there and join us. Um, you can even come in, hit the StreamYard link and talk to me and give me your opinion, but There just may be no cure for this. May be a problem that can't be fixed across the board. Of course, there's always going to be great, you know, Sun students. It's always going to be great Sun students. There's always going to be a percentage that are very good, but fixing it across the board, it just it just may not be possible. Because of some things that no one wants to talk about. Some inherent things. Some unfixable things. Some things that have to do with the hardware and not the software. They take, they take, they take. When Giovanni Patterson ran for Baltimore City Council president last year. Yet, despite the amount of money they get... We don't see much change. He ran on a platform that included accountability and education. Our schools outspend 97% of other major school districts. And when Project Baltimore showed him how Baltimore City students have been doing this year. This is terrible. Here is how he reacted. This is just further perpetuating the cycle of poverty, blight, despair. This chart was assembled by Baltimore City Schools and obtained by Project Baltimore. It shows the average GPA for every high school grade in the city, freshman through senior. In the first three quarters of this past school year, according to the chart, 41% of all Baltimore City high school students earned below a 1.0 grade point average. That speaks for itself, man. I mean, that there's really not a lot of commentary you need to give on that. The thing that you need to really understand, though, is that this is across the board, across the country. Baltimore is the canary in the... I wouldn't even say canary. Baltimore is like for education what Chicago is for street crime. It's easy to just say Chicago, Chicago, even... The um, the wokesters can say Chicago. Okay, we're, we're Chicago, we're like, and we all know that the same things that happen in Chicago happen in everywhere. And Chicago is about the thirtieth most dangerous city in the country. So, and they do that with Baltimore a lot. They focus on 
how poorly the Sun teens are doing and, and the Sun children are doing in Baltimore. And it gives them a way to just like focus like, okay, it's Baltimore. No, this is everywhere. Okay? Everywhere. All right? Now, some places may be 30%. Some places may be 20 But listen, anything over 1% or 2% is bad. But around the sun, but it's going to be over, over 30% or under between 30 and 50 in every district you go to where this is the case. In the first three quarters of this past school year, according to the chart, 41% of all Baltimore City High School students earned below a 1.0 grade point average. In other words, nearly half of the roughly 20,600 public high school students in Baltimore earned less than a D average. It's heartbreaking. If almost half of our kids are failing, what options do they have after high school? This is really disheartening. It's sad to see this, man. On the other end of this chart, 21% of city high school students earned a GPA of 3.0 or better, a B average. About half as many who earned below a D. Okay, so you got these 21 percent of students that actually are scoring above a 3.0 GPA, 3.0 or above. Now, these kids right here, these are the kids I would take. I would focus on this 21%. But what happens in the Sun Belt a lot of times, 99% of the time, the resources, the energy, the political capital goes towards helping the 41% that are under a one GPA. And these kids just go on pretty much anonymous. Um, And I would focus on these kids because these are the kids that you could polish up and, you know, give some extra study in, give some, um, you know, weekend drilling, maybe tutoring farms and bring them up to maybe the level of kids from other groups. Because these kids are these kids are even with the 3.0 at a Baltimore City school, like that's like, I mean that's, I mean, come on, that's like a getting a getting a um a steak from Denny's versus getting a steak from Ruth's Chris. I mean. Yeah, the steak at Denny's is good. I mean, you'll eat it if you had Denny's. But if you had your druthers, you take the steak from Ruth Chris. So these kids that are getting a 3.0 in Baltimore City School, they're not learning the same things that kids in other districts learn. They're not required. These are kids that show basic um, social skills as far as coming to school, <laughs> you know, Probably behaving, you know, moderately, acceptably in class. Um, turning in their work. Even though now you don't have to turn your work in on time. It's racist to make kids turn their work in on time. They just have to turn it in at some point during the semester. So, these kids that are doing well... Th they're at least exhibiting some potential. So I would work with these kids before I would work with the the kids doing um, a 1.0 GPA.
On the other end of this chart, 21% of City High School students earned a GPA of 3.0 or better, a B average, about half as many who earned below a D. We can also see the district lost more than 700 high school students during the first three quarters of this year. In January, City School CEO Dr. Sonia Santelisis first sounded the alarm, saying the course failure rate for students had nearly doubled during the COVID shutdowns. A few months later in May, North Avenue announced students would not be held back for failing classes. This most recent GPA data could show us why North Avenue made that decision. So... The kids won't be held back for failing classes. Is that not privilege? I remember back in the 90s when I was in school, they passed everybody at the end of the year. Like, it, 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 it never dawned on me then, like, why am I, why do we do work? Why do we, because the, the kids that were struggling, they just passed them along. But is this not privilege? Think about if one of these kids ends up, you know, getting themselves righted enough to even go to like a college or something or fill out an application to go to a college. And they're going up against kids from other groups. And those kids from other groups didn't get to fail classes and it just not be marked against them. Those other kids had rigorous curriculums, AP courses, you know, taking real class, having to do homework, have to turn their work in on time, have to be on time. You know, none of the allowances that are given to these Sun teens in their schools where you just, you know, you don't have to be on time. You don't have to. You know, there's very little required from you in these Sun schools. So if you got an application A from student from Baltimore City School, who at some point failed a bunch of classes and it was just washed from his record, and you have kid B from, you know, Glacier Glider um, School District, and They've done everything right because they couldn't get those allowances. So they, they that wasn't an option. You couldn't fail no classes. And even be thinking about going to said college. You do know that if that Sun team has... A SAT score that's even above what eight hundred. That the school would most likely take him over the other kid, even if the kid had a fourteen hundred or thirteen hundred on their SAT. And that would be privilege just in itself that the Sun team can have a lower score. But if you look into a deeper and you would go back and realize that the Sun team failed a bunch of classes and it was just washed from his record. In January, City School CEO Dr. Sonia Santelisis first sounded the alarm, saying the course failure rate for students had nearly doubled during the COVID shutdowns. A few months later in May, North Avenue announced students would not be held back for failing classes. This most recent GPA data could show us why. North Avenue made that decision. During the second quarter of the 2019-2020 school year, just before COVID hit, 24% of high school students had a GPA below one. Now, it's 41%. 
City schools declined an interview, but told us in a statement, the COVID-19 pandemic created significant disruptions to student learning. Starting this summer and beyond, City Schools is providing students with a variety of opportunities to acquire the unfinished learning they lost. It's not gone. It's not going anywhere. City Council President Nick Mosby, who defeated Patterson in the election, is reportedly under investigation by the U.S. Department of Justice concerning campaign finances business and tax records who's shocked by that <laughs> this guy's an investigation <laughs> who's shocked by that city council president nick mosby who defeated patterson in the election is reportedly under investigation by the u.s department of justice concerning campaign finances business and tax records Project Baltimore emailed and called Mosby's office, requesting an interview to discuss these numbers concerning student GPAs. We never heard back. These people don't care, man. It's, <laughs> they, they come from the same from environment. You know, they, Nick Mosby is a product of Baltimore City Schools. Brandon Scott's a product of Baltimore City Schools, and they see what's going on. But then when you bring this to them, they don't care. They don't care at all. You have to raise the standard. I'll I'll give the mayor and the city councilman a break on this point. They know nothing can be done. They know there's nothing that can be done about this. They know there's an achievement gap. They know there's a ability, mental ability gap that can't be bridged. It's just there. And um, there's nothing that can be done about this. So I wouldn't say that they don't care. I think that they they silently <laughs> agree with everyone who gets blasted for publicly saying what I just said. They just silently agree product of Baltimore City Schools and they see what's going on. But then when you bring this to them, they don't care. They don't care at all. You have to raise the standard. Everyone should be speaking out about this. Project Baltimore reached out to the other school systems in our area requesting their GPA data. We were told by all of them that it's not readily available. I'm Chris Pabst and this is Project Baltimore.